you ever feel like your past life may catch up to you in a way? Yeah. Do you do? Yeah. Does that, does that make you paranoid? Nah. Never paranoid, ever. Over that stuff. You know? The seed you plant now, you might get your fruit in five years. You know what I mean? But you, you gotta eat your fruit, bro. You know what I mean? You planted them apples, bro? Yeah, you gotta eat them. Comes with it, though. But this is my thing. Do you know what it is? Yeah, it's like. <laughs> <coughs> Outside of religion, yeah, and I'm not trying to say, oh, what are you scared of? But you seem so assured. Like, you know, many people don't have confidence in themselves. So when I'm hearing you say, when I was seven, I thought I was the greatest. Like, bro, like, th these aren't normal traits that people no. stereotypically have. Like, mm. you're almost broken by society mm. and taken as a broken person and accepted what you've been given. But even when I'm looking at that, to the deals that you guys have turned down, to the way that you almost view life, it's, it's kind of hard for me to... That's why I put the first thing as the anomaly. I have not really seen... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get me? Yeah. Like, I don't know, is your, do you, are you and your brother similar? Like, where does, where does all this kind of come so from? So similar, but so apart, you know? So we'll get to the same destination, but he'll, he'll go a different way. You know, I might just get there sooner. You know? You know? But, like, is that the household? Is that the ends? Like, is that... Yeah, I mean, household guys, like, we grew up in, like, a, a, a home of, like, a, just to say, like, we had a lot of freedom for a lot of different reasons, you know what I mean? So, but he got his freedom, like, my life changed when I was about seven, when I started rapping. My granddad died, my dad had to be out with my mum. My mum was going through a lot. So I was, like, Mowgli, you know? in the jungle, but no, no one knows where I'm at. It's not important, you know. But he was like 11, 12. So he had what built him up, stableness built him up up until 12, but stableness building you up up until seven, different, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's actually kind of mad thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you were seven, what was you doing? I was calm, bro. What was you doing? I was just in the yard. Just yeah, and school. I was on the block when I was seven. Seven? Yeah, 1 a.m. on the block. Oldest telling me, go home, we dead. You yeah, scared them times. Like, why you, I mean, like, it's going to sound dumb, you know, but being on the block at seven. Yeah. I mean, at the age of seven, at 1 a.m., like, mm -hmm. what brings you there? I'm outside. It's like, you know, when outside, when I say, nigga, I'm outside, yeah. like, that's mad deeper than all that. It's like, that was me at seven. That, only now I identify with that line. Back then though, seven-year-old me identifies with that one line in that whole song. My nigga, I'm outside, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I'm bobbing my head like, I'm outside, bro. I'm outside, I'm not an indoor baby. Indoor for what? Ain't nothing going on this side. Ain't nothing you want to see going on this side. Nothing you want to see going on this side, bro. Nothing. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. See, outside. You know what I mean? So I was thinking that like, your bro, your bro must have seen that you was. Yeah. That, like, but. And that's where you want to go into that. So then, what does he say to you then when he, if he's seeing that? Um, you know that's my big brother. You always wanted me to be a certain way, but it's like, it comes a time when it's like. You know what I mean? Like, for you to take something from someone, you have to give them a, what's that word called? Um, a replacement. Mm. So I, if, like, if I take away, if I take away this uh, phone off you, I've got to give you a book to read. Like, what's he going to take away from you and then give me instead, you know? Yeah, especially at that age as well. What can and you he's do? 12, 13. Mm. I'm 7, 8 now. I'm on the block. I'm seeing shit. I'm seeing these. I'm in these houses. I didn't even know. I didn't know I was in these. I didn't know bando baby. Did you get it? I didn't know I'm in a bando, but I'm in a bando though. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm with my, you know, friends, mums and dads, they're in the east, smoking, butch, injecting in front of us. We don't know. We don't know what that is. We, we think that's normal, you know? We're playing in the garden outside. We're opening foil, there's shit in the foil. Cause these niggas are shitting in foil, closing it and throwing it out their window. One leg, they can't go to the toilet. 
Ni ishe. Bando shit. So it's like, that's, that's what we know. You know what I mean? Is there, is there a point when you, you know that that ain't what it's supposed to be? Or not? Like, that's not everyone's reality. Yeah. The first point where I knew that it's really wrong is when I got a girlfriend. Okay. Well, she wasn't from that life then, she didn't? Nah, she's from the hood, but it's like... Like, I would get in bed with her in my tracksuit. I think that's normal, to sleep in bed like that. She's like, mm. nah, we you doing that? But I'm used to sleeping in traps with jackets, two tracksuits, two tops, mm. hats. I ain't even trying to make my face touch this uh, sofa. I don't want to get no rash, you know what I mean? But then she's like, yo, are we? Like, and then you, you start questioning, like, love will make you question a lot about you yeah. and how you was raised. So that's, that's when I, that's the first time I realised, realised, like, yo, I came up different, you know? And I was like 18. <coughs> that's a long, bro, that's, <coughs> that's a long time. That's a long time, <coughs> but Yeah. Up until then, I just like, I know niggas ain't built like this or like from this, but they're just weirdos. But like, nah, that's when I realized like, nah, like, yo, we, we super weird, you know? Yeah. I mean, but then what, is, what does that do to you then? When you almost, not, you just. That's when you start digesting. Mm -hmm. Then after digesting comes reflection, you know? And is then the reflection, does that become painful then? In my sequence of events, it's digestion, reflection, and hold on, digest again. Something else now that I've learned. And then reflection, then wait, 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 hold on. Digest again, then hold on, wait, wait. How can I digest all three now? Then reflection, 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 wait, 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 two more, bro. Digest, digest. So it was just digestion, digestion. I'm high, I'm high, I'm high, I'm high, I'm high. And then it's like pain from number one, but right now we're on number 28, 29, 30, but pain from number one though, okay. then pain two, three, four, five, six, and then digestion from number 32, 33, 34, then pain, pain, pain from number six, seven, eight, and then confusion, yeah. That's a mad cycle. Bro. Mad, bro. It's a mad cycle. Mad, mad, mad. Yeah, that's crazy, because yeah, 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 it's hard to compute that, but... It makes sense. But I mean, it's hard to compute the fact that you've understood one part, but there's another part. Still so many fun. parts. Mm. So many. Where, where, do you, where do you see where you're at now, then, within... Your, where you, where you Spiritually. That, yeah, where are you digesting now, then? I'm digesting shit that like, I, I could have, like, been 13 now, but, you know? Mm that's hitting me now and I'm like oh fuck well if that's hitting you remember what happened when you was 15 you know not great it's not great so that is do you forgive an addictive personality because like when I see the way that you are with recording I got a, I got the worst addictive personality you can get because the record like when I see that like, even on the tour and it's like it's almost like you have to always record yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to record which I guess is a positive thing, but it's like, it's like Tyson Fury, remember you were talking about him, but when he was saying when he was going through a situation, he had to train, he had to train, he had to train. If he yeah. starts boxing, them thoughts come back to him. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Like if you, like, let's say worst case scenario, you couldn't record for like a month. Do you know what that'll do, what that'll do to you? Yeah, I just got to get higher for the month. So. Yeah. But I, you know, like I said, like, bro, like, you see, I don't, I've never smoked, I've never drank, yeah. So, that's, that's great. Uh, bro, sometimes I think about it. I think like, nah, right. I don't. No, no, but I won't do it. But I mean, like, because I have to always, I, I deal with everything. Like, there's no escapism. Yeah. Like, it, we'd be in a club. I'm not drinking. I'm just in my thoughts, innit? And I've always was saying to myself, like, bro, like, if there's a way to get out of sometimes my thoughts and escape it, that must be pretty good. Do you get what I'm saying? And what I look at it is like, like, sometimes thoughts just keep on playing in your head but you have to still be doing one, th you've got to still be progressing. Like, so now I'm saying like, when I look at your output and you're saying, okay, cool, we're going to put out three mixtapes this year, yeah, potentially. I'm looking at that, that that's, that's going, but what's the other thing that's kind of like mentally still playing back as you're seen to be excelling, if that makes sense? 
because you're, you're doing music everyone's looking at the music part but as a, as a human being like you're saying dealing with something that you're potentially when you're 15 or 13 it, it's going to catch up at a certain point yeah catches up all the time bro like what are you going to do is that what you said about the thing about the moods when you could be like seven you could feel yeah like, I might wake up tomorrow different today different day after that different it's like you got to take each day as it comes man mm. I realised that Prince had said something to me the other day that I'd hit home he said some people are on earth to suffer so that everyone else around them are straight and that's that, that's all I think it is you know that's that um, I'm paraphrasing that's almost been a sacrificial lamb yeah I'm paraphrasing Someone got to be it, though. Someone got to be the lamp. You know what I mean? Would you? I mean, I'm not gonna put words in your mouth. Do you? Do you see do you, myself as the lamp? Or do you see? Do you understand that concept within somewhat of your yeah. work? It's like, uh, look, um, there's a lot of different outlooks to a lot of different things that happen in life there's a lot of different perceptions to one thing times that by a hundred where are we gonna start and what I mean by that is like if you know your spiritual who you're connecting to is in line then I think you're good you know I think you're good. Like, as long as you're a pure person, I'm pure. I'm pure, bro. LB's pure. Remember, pure don't mean perfect. Pure don't mean positive. Pure means I'm me. 9 out of 10. You know what I mean? 29 out of 10. So. So, Prince, what, what, what made you say that to him? No, we were just having like a. We were having a normal discussion. Mm. Like, just a normal discussion. And then, obviously, like. It's one of those things that, as a human being, like, there's certain times when you think, like, oh, rah, should I do something? Like, when, you, when it comes down to it, should I, should, I, should I do it? Should I keep doing this music? Mm. Then you're like, rah, if I quit doing music, everyone else suffers. But then, if I keep doing music, everyone else can benefit from it. So it's kind of utilitarianism, I think that's the right word for it, which is like, kind of like, sometimes the needs of the masses outweigh the needs of just one person. Yeah, so it's so like, that's, that's where it kinda like from. you become a service, bro. Mm. You mm. become a walking service. Do you get it? Mm. You, you're not a human no more. You're a service. Right. You know? I can go in the shop, I can like, I can break down in tears right now and go to the shop to get tissue. I might bump into four fans. Oh my God, is that young man's here? Yeah. i got a smile with yeah, them. Take, a pic on. take, take picture. my picture. I could have the worst day before I get on stage. I've got to go on stage and smile and be wavy. You're a service. You're not a human, you're a service. You're as good as a clown. Like, you're a circus tears act. Tears of a clown. Yeah, mm. tears of a clown. And it's like... That's why when you see rappers wilding and that, like, it's not so black and white. It's not so simple. Like, it's very colourful. Very colourful. Mm. Every different shade to yellow, every different shade to red is in that mix. You know what I mean? What does he do? Because mm. from the outside, you're going to go, yo, you got your whole life ahead of you, man. You're 21. You got a, a song that's radio played and the. Yeah, but what, like, what do you know though? Like, what do you know then? So tell me what you know about that before you tell me about that. What do you know about that? You know what I mean? Is it? And again, I'm not tying it to spiritual spirituality. Is then the money worth the service then? Nah. No. I think the message behind the money and what you achieve behind it is worth it. Being great is worth it. Do you know what, Janet? And, and the reason I put this is because I think a lot of people will look, I think, wrongly and they'll see... And I'll be honest, I actually questioned in my head when I saw the... Um, 
Is it you bought your, you bought your daughter? Was it a, I bought a, a Rolex for her first birthday? Yeah. Yeah. So when I looked at it, I didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? But I remember you gave your. I think you. I think, and I could be wrong. You said like you don't want your daughter to ever be, to ever see these things by. Basically, don't want any man to be able to like. Dazzle her with like, is it jewelry or whatever? Yeah. It, yeah. And then when I heard it, I was like, okay, there's a new way of thinking that I've been exposed to as opposed to looking at it like this is reckless spending, which was my first initial mentality because I didn't understand how a one-year-old would actually know. But they can't tell the time, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's like, number one, it's an investment. Number True. one, yeah. yeah, I can sell that, whatever. When she's five, I can sell it and get more money, you know what I mean? Mm. Number two, it's like, if she's growing up around seeing, uh, like, she could say when she's 18, I had a Rolex when I was one. So you, JJ, <laughs> yeah, why do I care about your Rolex? If I had a Rolex when I was one, I had niceness from when I was one. Mm. 